Hey guys, Mike here with uh, VKBoatAndSleds.com. Today we're going to show you how to summarize your sled. Season's coming to an end, maybe you got your last trip in, um, maybe you're packing it up. But uh, today we're going to show you how to properly summarize it and get your, uh, your pride and joy all stored away for the, uh, for the boating season. <clears throat> what I like to do is first start off by actually running the sled, get it warmed up for a few minutes, um, Sometimes get it up to temperature is the best, but definitely get the motor running. So uh, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get it running for a few minutes. So after you got it running, warmed up, uh, the next step I like to do is drain the gas out of it. Uh, nowadays the sleds mostly have plastic tanks, so um, there's really no need to, to keep the gas in it. A lot of guys like to keep gas in it, but uh, if you do, I would use something called sea foam to stabilize it. But in my opinion, you're better off with no fuel in it. It doesn't gel up, doesn't turn to varnish. Just get it out of the sled and out of the equation. Uh, what, what I use is called this uh, safety siphon. It's got a little marble in here. And, uh, well, you see how it works. It works real nice. Let's get a few shakes. Get it so right now you've got all the fuel drained out of the tank. Um, so run that dry. The next step is to fog the motor. I uh, use something like this, engine store, fogging oil. Uh, any kind of fogging oil is fine. This is good for two and four cycle motors. So in order to fog the motor, you gotta get to the carbs. So every sled's gonna be a little different, but um, you're gonna wanna take the air box off. And this one's got a whole bunch of stuff connected to it, but I need to run the motor, so I'm going to kind of set it to the side here. And uh, <clears throat> start up your sled, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once I get the sled running, <clears throat> I'll let the fuel that's in the lines drain out. And once they're drained, I can, we'll turn the fuel valve off lastly, and then uh, we'll fog each cylinder, and once the fuel that's in the carbs runs out, I will actually kill the motor on the fogging oil itself. on fogging oil. Um, it's out of gas, but if you put it on half choke, you'll probably get able to start again and continue running the gas that's in the carbs. So now you've got the motor fogged. Uh, the next step would be to, um, <clears throat> don't necessarily have to do this, but not a bad idea. Take both the uh, plugs out. It's be nice and wet from all the fogging oil. And uh, take some fogging oil and spray it down the cylinders. And slowly pull the recoil. A little more oil in it. What you're doing is coating the cylinder walls with oil. Get the top end and the bottom end, bottom end coated. And just put the plug back in. The next thing you want to do is get your sled ready for storage. And uh, you don't want to store your sled with the belt, with the belt on it. It will cause the um, it'll cause the pitting on the sheaves. And uh, we all know how expensive these belts are. So I recommend removing the belt. And you can just store it in here. But um, if you leave it on there, you'll notice next uh, winter when you pull the sled out, there'll be some pitting on there. And it doesn't hurt either. Spray some WD-40 on this. 
in the sheaves. And we'll also, uh, the better product to use and spread under on all the electrical components and all the rubber boots would be a silicone spray. You could use WD-40, but a silicone spray is going to stay around a little longer and prevent some dry rotting. So a lot of times I'll just spray the whole under the hood with a thin coat of silicone. And like I said, it just it prevents dry rotting on any of the rubber components. The next thing I do, as dumb as it sounds, depending where you keep your sled, but it's not going to hurt either way. Uh, if it's in a mice ridden barn or a rodent, uh, area, rodent area, load it up with dryer sheets. Uh, it's better than mothballs, it doesn't smell, and it will keep um, mice and other rodents out. And the big problem with, with those type, uh, types of creatures living in here are chewing on all the wires. So I tuck them in anywhere where they can get in and where there's wires. Um, you don't need a ton of them, but my theory is they're cheap, so the more the better. You know, I'll tuck them in under here, so I'll put my cover on it. They'll stay in here. Put them in your trunk. Anywhere that they can build a nest. And the other, th um, the other thing you can do <coughs> is take some steel wool and uh, put it in your exhaust pipe along with one of these, and what it will do is it will stop rodents from climbing up your exhaust and making a home. Because once they're in there, it's real hard to get a nest out of your exhaust pipe, believe me. Uh, the other thing you can do before you stick all the dryer sheets in there too, is power wash it and clean it how you like. Now, the outside, I use a product called Plexus. It's just a plastic cleaner, but you want to clean the outside of your sled uh, before you put the cover on, because the cover is going to sit on it, and uh, that's what will, the dust will stretch the, the surface of your hood. So I'm going to clean my sled here. It's gone. Once you've got your sled all clean, the last thing you want to do take a grease gun and you want to grease all your grease fittings. Each ski spindle has one, one on each side of there, and in your suspension you want to go ahead and make sure you grease all your grease, all your grease fittings because what happens is you run it all winter, water gets in there, and it rusts all those bushings together. Now you should be doing this along the season as you go anyway but you definitely want to store it last with grease in it. And lastly, <coughs> a lot of guys like to keep the sled off the ground when you're storing it. Uh, the idea is it takes the weight off the track and the springs and the shocks and stuff like that. That's up to you. If you rebuild your shocks and you maintain your shocks, it shouldn't be a big issue. The, the sled sits on the ground all winter long anyway. Um, but for what it's worth, you can go crazy. You can. There's people who release track tension on it to take tension off the track. Um, you can release the springs on the skid to take the tension off springs. It just depends how crazy you want to get with it. Um, but if you're, worst case, you can build a stand, you can use something like this, you can lift the sled off the ground, it takes the weight off the springs and, and the shocks, so it's not holding the weight of the sled all, all summer. And uh, store it inside, put a cover on it. And uh, should be set to go for next season. If we can help you out with any any of the fogging oil uh, parts, you know, a lot of guys change the high facts now. It's ready to go next season. Get it all serviced. Clean your clutches. Uh, my suggestion is don't oil the clutch. Uh, if you're going to use anything on the clutch, use WD-40. Oil just attracts belt dust and makes sandpaper inside your clutch. I know they make clutch oil, but. Um, I think it's the same people who make clutch kits. It's my, it's a vicious circle. So I would just use WD-40, take the clutches apart, clean them, uh, clean your power valves, clean them now, or clean them. At, you know, some guys do it now or in the beginning of the season. Uh, make sure everything's cleaned up and put it away and pull out boats and jet skis. If we can help you out, 815-363-1254. Visit us online, www.bkboats.com. Thanks, guys.